Um, so uh, let me introduce myself first. Um, so my name is Tinh Nguyen. Um, I'm the technical architect uh, working for Unified Client. Um, I'm living in New Jersey, US. Um, usually I, I go to the client's office every, every, every week uh, before the pandemic. But um, after the pandemic, I, um, I just working from home every day. And uh, just sometime I, I schedule the meeting with, uh, with the team there and go to the office in the New York like once a month only. Um, so I work for Unify um, at the beginning time um, the clan stock working with us. Um, the Unify is based in uh, the New York, US, and they they doing the uh, the marketing uh, platform. Um, so um, they develop the marketing platform for their uh, their internal team using and their customer using as well. Um, today, I would like to talk about Unify. Uh, to share about the overview of the platform and the architecture and what we are doing, what we, uh, what technology we are using as well. Um, so let me start first uh, for the agenda. Uh, for the agenda is, um, I will talking about a unified platform to let everyone know uh, what's the unified platform, um, about the features, about the architecture, about the uh, technologies, and uh, some of service um, is uh, the biggest service in Unify uh, is the data collection, uh, data pipeline, um, and uh, the Unify powerful reporting. And that is uh, the the reporting system we we developing um, from on the recent years. Um, and Q and A. If you have any question, um, answer. Um, a question, uh, let me know, feel free to, to ask or to me and ask in the question if you want. All right. Um, so what is U Unify platform? So Unify is the company under the iHub Media Group. Um, some of you know like iHub, iHub Media is like iHub Radio, right? So it's there's the, the largest um, radio station group owner in the US, um, they, yeah, so uh, the, they, they run in a lot of uh, radio um, in a lot of channel. So they, um, they have the, the, uh, the digital team to run in at advertising um, um, on uh, audio uh, and radio as well. So um, Unify has been acquired by IRF Media um in 2019 and now uh, we we become the um the um a company under i have media group um so unify has been filed 2010 uh, 20, uh 2011 um and at that time they start building the the platform uh, the marketing data uh, data driven uh, platform um, and our offshore team start uh, working for them uh, since 2016. At that time, they uh, they want to build a new platform uh, with the big uh, the big data, um, um, including like data pipeline that we have currently, and uh, a lot of reporting function. Um, that's uh, they provide to the customer to pull the data from their data warehouse. Um, so uh, we start uh, interacting with a lot of uh, publisher. Um, uh, the first one is the Facebook and Instagram. Um, is the biggest publisher in in um, in Unify interaction. Uh, and then we we add in Twitter, Pinterest, Snapchat, and currently we have like over seventeen publisher we interact into Unify system. So um basically we uh we pull in the data uh from those publisher based on the um the marketing data uh the user is um onboarding their token into our system and we uh start pulling the data uh from the those publisher and store the data into our data warehouse and data lake um 
So um, recently, like we 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 pull in um, around um, one billion data every day, um, and uh, um, and we make a lot of API requests to to the publisher API um, to get those data. Um, also, we we uh, we collect the data via where the uh, some data feed provide some uh, from some publisher they push the data into the F3 and then uh, we have the the data pipeline to pick up the data and store into the data warehouse as well um, so unify take a comprehensive approach to omni channel digital advertising so um, we provide a platform um, uh, based on our digital expert um uh leverage uh leverage uh is uh the purpose fuel technology and um uh, currently the unified platform support for the pet social like you run in the campaign on the facebook or the twitter um and you you um those campaign we call the pet re, uh, social and uh the pro frame metrics um uh, like um you running the um the the um the campaign um based on the uh, the location like uh the store visit um some of publisher they provide a store visit thing um um advertising um and the ott is the um the uh, one of the biggest one um running by the i media team uh so we operate uh those campaign and the advertising uh, for I heard media. Um, so the OTT is, um, 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 is like some running on some device. Um, so OTT stands for the over the top. It means like um, you run the advertising on some like TV, uh, the device, TV, Fire Stick TV, or some like Google Chrome. Um, um, on the on the tv on the device um and uh the uh the streaming audio um so um that is based on the one of service uh running on the i heard media um we're using the trident is the one of sub company under the i heard media group as well um the end user using the platform is um the digital marketer um which is um including the internal campaign manager um, Unify has the internal team who like the agency uh, who run in the advertising, the campaign, the advertising for their customer and um, some of digital marketer from the their customer like on the um, um, like some of big, uh, biggest agency um, using our platform like the A7 2020 or the Horizon um, Media Group. Uh, they're using our platform in you know, to control uh, the campaign, um, review the data, or like uh, getting the data for uh, for analyzing. Um, that's that is uh, what what we are doing. Uh, so, Tim, sorry, quick question. Now, uh, all these campaigns that you're running are these campaigns for uh, like like a B two C category where uh, uh, iHeartMedia is trying to acquire more uh, uh, listeners. Or what are these campaigns for? Um, so the campaign, like uh, what the customer we order the uh, running their campaign for their product, right? So um, they will they will have go to the sales force, and oh, then okay. um, they will make the order. Um, like oh, I I want to run the campaign in uh, July, uh, twenty twenty three, um, with uh, my expectation like the targeting is focusing on the user on the Facebook and Twitter uh, from 17 years old to 30 years old. Um, so the Unify will got the, the order and they will have the internal team to run the campaign for the customer. Or the customer can go to directly to the Facebook and Twitter um, and run the campaign there and they will use the Unify platform for managing the data and see the the report across like multiple publisher uh, publisher 
like you run right. the a campaign on the Facebook, a campaign on the Twitter, and you can compare the performance between the Facebook campaign and the Twitter campaign. Um, on the Facebook, okay. you, yeah. Okay, and and then since uh, iHeart Media bought Unified, so iHeart Media is also running their campaigns through Unified now, or how how do they use Unified now? Um, so Unify is play as the operation um, um, team. So they will managing on the advertising uh, order from the iHeart Media. So iHeart is having the sale team. They will uh, get the customer, get the order, and then they will give the, the order. We have the, the system to interact with their, their system um, to get the order and, okay. and autom- automatically initiate the campaign on the Facebook or Twitter based on the order information. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah. And also, I have made that they have, they have the, um, the, uh, the team to running some campaign on the radio as well uh, and audios. Um, so this is the picture show what we are doing in Unify. Um, so if you look into the the the, uh, the picture, right? Uh, we have the spend by platform. So um, you see, like we have the sum of report can show you like under the brand like Toyota. Um, we running on three platform like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and the the platform can show you how how much you spend on each platform. And we we also have many, many different reports like breakdown by brand, breakdown by company, uh, breakdown by initiative, uh, breakdown by line um, based on the data we have uh, from the publisher API. So we will show more inside data to the customer. So for the feature, um, so one of our biggest feature in Unify platform is a data collection. So uh, we collect uh, the data from se- over 17 data source um, via the API, S3, SFTV, or sometimes like Kafka. So some publishers, they provide the data via the Kafka. We using the Kafka mirror um, to link to their Kafka and get the data from them directly and um, uh, we proceed our data pipeline to store the data into the our data warehouse. Um, we're using the Kafka as the our backbone uh, of the data pipeline. So everything like when the data is come through to the, the Unify, uh, it can be lent to S3, it can be um, received by the JSON or CSV uh, over the, the, uh, the API request. However, after that, we 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 have data caution service to push the data into the Kafka, and eventually we have the streaming data transformer service, like the ETL, the streaming ETL, um, to uh, make, uh, transform the data to the other data type April schema, and um, and eventually we will store the data into the data lab or the data warehouse. We're using the Redshift. Um, to store um, the main data with the structure data into the ratio. Uh, the rest of data we store into the data lake. Uh, we use in high uh, to manage the data there. Um, so we migrate the service to using the Kubernetes, um, using the AWS EKS um, recently. So the service can, in the big uh, time, um, it can be scaled up to like um, 200 instant um, or 300 instant, depend on the um, how how the traffic look like. Like based on the the, the number of token, uh, based on the number of data we we have to collect every day. So the the system will auto automatically scale scaling to more instant in order to like make more API request uh, to get the data on time. Um, uh, I will talk about the service later, more detail uh, about the service later. Um, the other service we, um, the other feature we we developed 
uh, at the beginning time, but recently we we tried to build a new one, um, and the new one ha has been released onto the production already. Um, we call the unified powerful reporting. So uh, that is contained on the reporting functions um, in that to provide the data to the customer. We have uh, the plan for building the data feed um, under the reporting. So some customer, they, they want to get the data via their SFTB or the F3. So we, we, we build a data, data feed system um, using the airflow to um, export the data from our redship and and um, and store uh, send the data by, uh, to the S3 or the SFTB uh, provided by the customer. Um, and uh, we have um, yeah that service is built on the Kubernetes as well. Um, especially uh, the unified powerful reporting uh, we enhance with the new version we enhance using the DAS. Uh, uh, distribute uh, data processing uh, like Spark, uh, but uh, the reason why we're using the DAS, we we doing some experiment and uh, we decide to using that DAS because um, um, the the old one we using the um, the pandas and uh, with the single machine, even like we we can scale up to multiple machine uh, with the, the old reporting system, but um, it's, it's, it's not um, like uh, distributed data processing for DAS or Spark. Um, it's provided uh, the architecture with uh, the scheduler and multiple worker. And um, the worker can work uh, together in order to process the, the, the a, a report um, um, at the same time. Um, so DAS is provided the, uh, the interface um like bandas uh for the data frame and uh, some of all the benefit is that is younger um so that's why the team is selected us uh to uh, include uh, and support in our our reporting service here um later i i will i will show more how we using DAS um in the reporting system and uh, it's, it's working on the portion now um, the other feature is the optimization. Um, so Unified Platform providing a real-time optimization service. Um, so basically, like it will optimize the running ad campaigns. Um, so when the customer running the campaign on the on the Facebook, so we have the service that they they can they can go to the UI um, the Unified Platform, and they um, they try to apply some optimization configuration uh, to let the system will automatically real time uh, update the campaign in order to provide the best performance on, on, on the ad running on, on the Facebook. Or we support um, over 17 publishers already. So that's a cool feature. Uh, that will reduce the cost uh, when running the ad uh, on the publisher and it's based on the, the, the expert knowledge uh from the unified team um that's working in order to make the, the your campaign can running uh with the best performance uh you spend less but you get more more customer um more impression from the customer um the other service is the valuation so basically um we provide a real-time valuation based on the data we collect and push it into the capture so the valuation will working um, to detect the from the data um, and detecting and pin out any issue based on the rule and we define based on the rule engine. Um, so the rule engine we're using the true um, um, is the Java based um, um, service um, that's provides uh, yeah provide the the interface can let us can define the rule without um without changing um the application call um so on the rule is store uh is it being stored in the database um 
and uh, we we have the rule engine service to load the rule and uh, validate the data uh, automatically on it. So um, the the violation is 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 one of service um, can detect um, like every day is is running every hour, and um, uh, it can detect and working on like um, over ten thousand um, uh, campaign data um, and uh, with would like around like 200 uh, rule uh it detect a lot of issue um when the, the the end user set up the campaign on the facebook for example like um um the order from the customer they ask um they would like to run the campaign in july right but this the the campaign manager who created the campaign they make the s uh the mistake on the when they set up the campaign they select the fly date from june 15 to july 15. so the violation will will detecting that's into and inform to the uh, the campaign manager um in order to let them like be aware of and uh, fix the issue um quickly otherwise like it will it will have some redundant um uh span um because um because uh we're running earlier and we end as a, a, a little bit earlier as well um that's it, the violation service um for the pacing dashboard is is one of feature the main feature in unify as well um pacing is in advertising uh the campaign manager uh, use uh the pacing um to real time checking the performance of the campaign so our data data production is running every hour and we sync up the data from the the publisher um uh, sync up the data from the publisher every hour so the pacing will calculate some 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 inside information based on the um on the um Based on the formula provided by the um, by the CM team um, to show uh, you like if the campaign is is running well, doing well, or the performance of the campaign is, is lower, and any budget uh, is rich, or um, if the campaign is need to adjust the setting, so it will tell you uh, on the dashboard. Um, Salesforce so integration. So, like I mentioned, like we have the Salesforce in order to receive the the uh, the order from um the customer, and we have the integration with the Salesforce in order to sync up the Salesforce data, and uh, push the data from the Unify to the Salesforce back and forth. Um, that's that is um one of integration we have. Uh, we also using the Sysons uh BI tool, um, to provide the uh, the configure uh, con configure uh, dashboard, so you can configure the, the the dashboard um, based on uh, the customer needed, or the customer can go there and configure the dashboard um, uh, to get the data and show the data on the dashboard for uh, for them. Um, so this one is uh, being used for some of dedicated uh, customer of the Unify. Uh, they want to have the dashboard to um, to see some custom data. Uh, they want to see um, uh, based on the their their data stored in the the, the Unify. Um, the last one is the ISM integration. I I ISM is the IF media integration. Um, so we have uh, integrate with the ISM uh, at system. Um, to get the data from them and push the data to them. Um, so we collect the, the, the publisher data and we 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 put their data and we push uh, some uh, marketing data to their system. Um, this one is the architecture and the technology uh, we use in, um, in Unify. And um, the picture is a little bit small, but I can tell you like, the blue one on the top is our micro component uh, front end. So we have we have, we have the platform application and we split it into multiple micro 
uh, component ponent uh, using the React JS or the Vue JS. Uh, so that is working as the, the 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 single application. And uh, we the yellow one is the session one that's provide a configurable dashboard uh, like I mentioned. And uh, we have the I IHM dashboard um, the 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 um, the other UI uh, we provide to the HM customer uh, to let them review the performance of their advertising. Um, so we the architecture of the Unify is uh, we using the microservices um, architectures. Uh, we have the platform API as the API gateway, and uh, we using the uh, we deploy and using the AWS service. Uh, one of service the authentication service uh, we using the AWS Conito, um, uh, Conito, um, and um, the green color. If you look into the green color uh, on the left hand side, um, we have the data collection. So in the data collection, we have it contain multiple microservices uh, inside. Uh, one of service is uh, the executor, and the the other service is reloader, and um, the one of API service is collection engine API in that to let us can interact with the UI so you can run uh, ask the data collection to run the data um, to run the uh, collection to collect the data from the UI um, and also like we interact with uh, the, um, some other um, microservices uh, to let the those service can send the command to the data collection uh, like hey can can you collect the um, the audit data to me? Um, so that is those uh, ad hoc requests. Um, so we have the generator. Generator is working with um, with the database to generate the task, uh, which is uh, we will start collecting the data. Um, so on the data, when we collect, we will send it to the Kafka. Um, so uh, and after that, the the green box up uh, under the Kafka topic in the left hand side. Um, you can see we have the Kafka Connect. We're using the Kafka Connect for uh, consuming the data from the Kafka and store it into the S3 bucket uh, at the, the staging storage. Uh, and after that, um, in the data pipeline, if you look into the data pipeline under uh, at the bottom, uh, we have the data. Uh, the Spark app is the the old ETL we use in the Spark uh, to um, load the data from the S3 bucket and store into the data lake. And finally, we will store into the data warehouse using the Redshift. And um, uh, we develop uh, the new ETL service using the the Kafka Stream. Uh, we call the uh, the Sweep Data Operation. So that service will streaming. Um, Lot in the data and um, store directly the data into the Redshift. Um, we not store uh, the data into the data like for that service. Um, we also uh, have the data enhancement. So some of data like uh, we want to enhance the data based on some um, like allocate some pre allocation and the data. So we're using the data um, enhancement service um, using the Kafka, uh, Kafka stream. Um, to enhance the data before storing into the S3 bucket. And um, yeah, we have the data transformer, uh, the, the real time ETL. That's uh, we read the data directly from the consuming the data directly from the Kafka topic. Um, and then um, transform the data into the Avro schema and store into the S3 bucket. Um, so in the in the right hand side, if you look into that, it contain a lot of microservices uh, we developed in Unify. Um, so those service is uh, support for for one of function in Unify. So you can see like we have the variation, we have the um, the PMN is the uh, private marketing uh, services um, network. Um, so we we connect the data from the brand company, we're using the nail portrait um, to 
store the, the those relationship data uh, in the graph database uh, name for trade. Um, so like you can connect in the brain, a brain to the company and the brain to the campaign. Uh, so from that data, you will know like how many campaign running for that brain. Um, so yeah. Um, yeah, you can see the optimizer service as well. So um, the the other service is the reporting. So if you um, if you look into um, the bottom of the microservices, um, the reporting we working with the Redshift mainly, and the, the reporting ODS um, is the progress database um, to allocate the data and show the data on the UI or send the data via the the custom email. Um, we also using the new relic and the uh, ELK stack to monitoring the system. So new relic for tracing, uh, ELK stack for locking. Um, so um, usually um, the new relic is very useful for the data portion monitoring and um, the reporting. I will show you the bit. Um, when I'm talking about the data portion later. Um, any any question so, on the architecture? Here? Yeah, uh, Tan, I'm, uh, so I'm, I'm still trying to understand the business case. Now, say for example, if I'm a plumbing company and I come to you and I say that, you know, like uh, we want to run our ads on Facebook uh, and we want to run it for a period of 15 days. Now, is that is that a valid use case uh, for uh, for this platform? That I come in as a, maybe a plumbing company. I know that you know, like this is the region that I want to target, and uh, I tell you that this is the promotion that I want to run for 15 days and starting from July 1st, say for example. So, is that a valid use case for this platform? Yeah, it is. Um, so, okay. um, basically, when the customer asking the unify and we receive the, the order, right? So the yeah. CM team will we go to those platform and run in the campaign on those platform. And oh, then okay. They, okay. I understand. Yeah. So, 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 so this this architecture that you showed this does analysis on the campaigns which are running. So, this through exactly. this platform, we are not running the campaigns as such. But once these campaigns are in progress, at that time, you know, like this platform is doing the analysis and reporting and all the good work after that. Exactly. Is we can analyze the the running campaign or the complete campaign already. Got it. Like Got like it. some customer, okay. they they have a lot of data on the Facebook. Or the yeah. Twitter, they can yeah. to unify. They want like their data will be collect into the unify and have the report to them. So they yeah. ask um, us to onboard their account to unify platform, and we start collecting their data. So we okay. we can look back the data and backfill the data. Like for the Facebook, like you can backfill the uh, data for the, the five recent years, well, the Got last it. five years, right? Got um, it. So and when we have the data, yeah. Yeah, and 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 once you're doing the analysis, uh, then you are also able to pass back feedback uh, to the people who are running the campaigns as to how to modify the campaign as well, so that uh, they can get a better response on that. Exactly. So we have the actually, actually we have some uh, real time service like optimization, so the uh -huh. user can uh, can uh, set in some the campaign like to let the system will automatically update the campaign on the Facebook. Uh, so okay. we basically, yeah, we we make the live call to the Facebook API to update the the campaign setting uh, when it runs. Yeah, I see, I see. And uh, and all these microservices that you're running, I'm assuming that yeah, you know, like uh, on all of these, you have some kind of uh, logging mechanism that will be pushing logs to a central location. And uh, is the monitoring etc. being done in that way, or how are you how are you doing the monitoring? I know you have the Elk stack. Uh, but uh, you know, like across these microservices, assuming that they are deployed on multiple nodes, uh, you know, like how does how do how do the logs make to the central location for you? Is it new relic for you? Yeah. So 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 on the the log of the on the service here, we will locate into the e ELK stack, right? So we using the key banner um, to go there, and we see yeah. on the log there. So and uh, we can filter by 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 the microservices. Uh, uh -huh. um, and uh, we we can filter um, to see the log of the the specific service, you know, to troubleshoot the issue. So 
ELK is, is support for for troubleshooting or reviewing the log uh, yeah. from uh, um, the on the services uh, running on the on the Unify. But some of service because sometimes like we using the new relic, um, it's have for like troubleshooting. Um, like at that time, the uh, the server U or the memory is, is warm up or like the distributed uh, tracing. Like the service A, a uh, calling to the service B and service B calling to the service C. Um, so the new relic can show you like how the request from the service A to the yeah, service it can B. show the it can show the yeah, traceability will, for for the request as it came right. Yeah, yeah, it will show you like where the uh, the the low performance uh locale in the service yeah. B or service C. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So and, we're checking everything. And is this deployed on uh, a cloud platform? Uh yeah, all we your deploy into yeah. Uh, we deploy everything to the AWS uh AWS, cloud. okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Understood. Yeah. The okay. team is and uh, these, try to use and, go ahead. And I know that you uh, you mentioned that your rules are written in rules. Uh, which is the Java rule engine that you're using, and Dask is primarily Python, right? So, uh, is it heterogeneous microservices that uh, some services are coded in a certain language and the others are in a different one? Is that how it is? Uh, yeah, the different one. So we we have Python uh, mm -hmm. for the reporting. Um, we develop the reporting under the Python. Uh, okay. We develop the da data collection under the Java. Um, mm -hmm. Some service here we we use in the GoLand. Um, like the PMN, we use in the GoLand, um, and oh, some okay. of service uh, we use in the Node.js, uh, like the the social API. We use in the Node.js because uh, the non-blocking uh, benefit uh, from the Node.js. Uh, JS. So it will let the social API will come to the publisher API, and um, and doing some integration easily. Mm. Okay. Okay. Yeah. But the okay. most of uh, the main language, uh, I'm trying to let um, let the the system using is Java and Python. Um, okay. Java for the backend uh, related yeah. to the Kafka, uh, Python yeah. related to the reporting. Got it. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. That's a good question. Thank you. All right. Um, I talk about the data question. So. Uh, like I mentioned, like we collect a, over one billion data every day, uh, from over like seventeen uh, data publishers. So, by the API, um, we we make um around five million API call. Not include the backfield from some new customer or some customer they, um, they onboarding some, um, some, um, some other data. So they ask us to run the backfield. So. Uh, that is not included here, but usually the system is making five million API call every day to uh, over seventeen publisher uh, to get the data. Um, um, the 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 service can scale up to two hundred instant, uh, but today I I just checked and it's it's around like two fifty uh, instances um, um, in the bit. Time. So it's been like uh, we have some nightly collection running early. So that is the big time that the, the data person is scale up more instant automatically. Um, so uh, the more instant we will coll uh, collect more data. But you know, like the publisher API have the rate limiting. Um, so we have the mechanism and the we develop the framework to let us can configure the rate limiting handler uh, to let the uh, the service. Will will handle well, uh, with the uh, with with each publisher. For example, like the Reddit is allow you to make like just like one request per per second per advertiser. So it's been like, um, yeah, we uh, we handle to make sure like we just make one request per second or like around fifty request per per minute, um, to to hit the um, the Reddit API uh, to get the uh, the data, uh, but some other publisher like the Facebook, they when you make the uh, the request and if the data is too large, so it will suggest you to break down the the dead range of the request 
for getting the report data, right? So you have to split it to a, a half in order to match the, the smaller data range to reduce the number of data. And the framework will 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 let you doing it automatically. Uh, you don't need to worry worry about like oh I and you have to handle those case um uh, separately. Um. So yeah, so the we develop the config framework. Um, let you can config the, the data portion without adding any code. So recently we have the UI to manage that one as well. Um, so basically like when the one of customer they uh, they come up uh, come by to us like uh, and ask uh, they want to collect the the new data uh, from the new publisher. So the team just spent like a week in you know, order to set up the data portion and uh, run, um, and let it start running and collect the data for them. Uh, before that, we have to coding, we have to write a test, we have to write a unit test, integration test, in you know, order to make sure like uh, the new data portion, uh, the new collection uh, can can work well uh, on production and the stage. Um, but now is they just spend like a week in you know, order to configure the, uh, the the collection to let the system can start uh, collect, co collecting the data. Um, so that is very, very, very useful. Um, so if you look into the, the below picture, um, I, I can describe it easily. Like before that, we, we have to write a Java call and constant not in order to let us like let the service know how it's running. And um, in 2019, um we transform it to the JSON configuration. So and then uh last year we transformed from JSON configuration to the graph. So uh, to the database. Um so uh the constant is uh, the on the configuration is in the database. So we provide a UI to let the, the engineering team can go to the UI and compute the data portion. Uh, we don't need to um to do any call here. Um, this is the architecture for the data portion. So if you look into this one, it's the logical mode uh, diagram. So uh, you can see the data co collector here is the main uh, component um, to work with the Polisher API. So it will pull the data from Polisher API and send the data into the Kafka. And um, and um, yeah, so the 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 one below is the constant is the scripting the script we config to let the data question can read the the configuration and it's will working based on our config uh based on our configuration uh, we revive so uh if you have the new purpose i just provide a new configuration um so after the data is sent into the kafka we have the streaming data enrichment uh it will enrich the data or like um, transform the data into the, the order data or like transform the data into the Ebro schema uh, data format. And then it will using the Kafka connect to store the data into the directly to the, uh, the RDS, uh, the re relational database uh, or um, we store into the S3 buckets and using the Swift data operation to import the data to the Redshift um and then uh the yellow box uh on top of redshift and ods is the the ui function using to query the data and uh show the data on to the customer that is how the data question work at unify um, so just curious here tin i know that you are enriching the data and then you are backing up the data so uh what is the reason for that why do we need to back up the enriched data because we have already we are not storing the raw data, right? Uh, so we are enriching the data and then we are backing it up. Uh, no, we, yeah, we, we not, uh, when we en uh, enriching the data, we're not backing it up to the S3. Uh, we, we, we just store the data into the database directly only. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. But uh, we, yeah, I mean like, um, because uh, we, we back up the data into the raw the data storage S3. So, um in some time like 
uh, when we enriching the data is wrong, right? The function is is uh, we we make some of that and it's, it's make the data right. wrongly. So right. we will we we have the data reload the uh, provide by the data portion you see in the box uh, under yes. the portion engine. Uh, right, right, right. So you are yeah. so you're so you're not going to the data provider again, but you are just uh, then uh, reprocessing exactly. the data. Okay. Yeah, 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 we that saw the sense. data in yeah, so we reload the data and re reset again the data. Yeah, um, yeah, makes sense. Yeah. yeah. So this one the new relic monitoring uh, for the data question. So if you look into the 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 picture, I include in Sorry, the Tim, in, in Tim, go ahead. Tim, can you can you go back to the previous slide? Yep. The the publisher API or the microservices wholly are publisher. Publisher API is calling the microservices to post the data. Uh, sorry, it's, um, it might be a, a little bit confusing. Here is um, the way I draw the row from Publisher API to the collection engine is mean like it's view our services, collection engine, we pull the data from the Publisher API. I see. Okay. So, so yeah, we, yeah. You are periodically polling and collecting all the data since last checkpoint, is it? Yep. OK, thanks. So the publisher API is mean like the Facebook API, Twitter API, Pinterest API. Uh, we have 17, over 17 publisher APIs, uh, which um, the collection engine working on. Well. All right. So um for the monitoring we use in the new relic um so this is um uh, the the screenshot I, I i took from the our one of monitoring that's for uh by uh, the new relic so if you look into this one every day the engineering team will go to the monitor, monitoring dashboard and they will look into like the total request by network that is will show you um on the request we make for the Facebook, how many requests we make for the crowd truth, uh, how many requests uh, we make to the Google ad. So it will show you more detail on, on, on how the thing happening. And uh, from the, the right hand side, um, it will break down by the job ID because we have a lot of, a lot of collection, right? So it will break down like which collection is, is making more requests because sometimes like, Sometimes like something happening wrongly, so we we don't understand like what what going on. Is is back to the whole system or is back to some service in our system because uh, we receive a lot of data uh, over our expectation. So we look into the dashboard. We will understand like how many requests uh, we send to the Facebook, how many requests we send to um one call, call, uh, a specific uh, collection is making right so we will kind of understand like oh what happening we we can compare with the other day uh, to see like oh is today we making like five five hundred thousand a request on the job uh id 1274 however like last week we just making like less than 10 times so it's mean like oh some something happening here maybe like some some client they they onboard onboarding a lot of data that's matter happening and it's it's downgrade the performance for the service so we have to understand everything uh, based on the new relic that's for here um the the below thing if you look into we we counting the fail rate by network so some of network they you you will see like the fail rate if the fail rate is higher than the other day if you look to the the percentage nearby um the small one so it's that is the the comparison uh between the today the fail rate of today and the fail uh seven days ago right um so we will understand like what happening on those publisher why we missing the data why we the data question is not is not working well so from the new relic we will see everything so this is the the main dashboard we using for monitoring the data question 
to troubleshoot in the issue and um, try to understand um, the the root cause and figure out the root cause and fix it. Um, unified powerful reporting. So, like I mentioned, like it will handle handling on the reporting function in unified system. So, anytime the user want to pull any data, so the reporting service will provide a function to let let them get the data um, from the ratio uh, from our data warehouse ratio. Um, so the reporting provide a function to generate the report by the Excel file and send it to the customer by email. Um, and especially we we support the large data data sets like some of customer they pulling the biggest one I I um I ever seen is um one customer they pulling one hundred year by data. Um, I mean the data we counting from the we query from Redshift, right? So one hundred year by data, oh, and the reporting yeah. can handle the one hundred data, one hundred year by data. Um, before that, the old architecture is not cannot be able to do it because uh, you know like uh, the old reportings we using the single service, single machine, and that machine we allocate like sixty four gig by memory only. But for 100 gigabytes, it's not able to do it. But with the with the DAS, a uh, distributed data processing, uh, we interact with the DAS and we leave everything related to data processing to the DAS. The DAS will query the data from Redshift uh, on each worker, and it will allocate the data there uh, based on our uh, our uh, the the what the service define, right? So after it's allocate and it's uh, finally the data, it will store it into the DynamoDB. And the service, the API service, just like query the data from the DynamoDB and um, send it to the customer only. So that is uh, resolve a lot of headache uh, for Unify uh, when the customer want to build, uh, put the report is with a really big data. Even like after we send the Excel file to them, they they not be able to open it. By, by their machine, um, but yeah, that's that's what um, we we also building the the query builder framework. That's framework very useful. So um, the old the the old reporting like you you can imagine like we manage a lot of query to redshift. Like for that function, we have the query. For that breakout, we have the the other query. So it's unmanageable. Uh, because when 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 we change the data, um, like we deprecate some 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 metric of like the buffer, uh, deprecate some some data, right? So we have to update the the entire queries in the the old one. But for the new one, we develop the query builder. That is the framework is will automatically generate the 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 query based on based on the user input um and we we let it understand the um our data model in the redshift um so that's that can like generate uh, the query automatically we don't need to maintain any query in the call uh, anymore so i will show you how it look like um later um so for the architecture um this is the architecture of the the reporting so the the left hand side, you can see the report API, um, where the user will send the request to. So that's API we're working with the Kafka to send um, send the, the the user request to the Kafka, um, and the Kafka behind at the queue, uh, we we have the um, the backend service for the reporting we call the executor, and uh, we have the data processor. So the data processor component we design to let it work with the DAS or the Spark. Recently, we're using DAS only, but uh, in the past, like we plan to, uh, to in our POC, we, we have the Spark as well, but after that, we deprecate the Spark. We just using the DAS only. So 
the architecture of the DAS, if you look into the the uh, the, uh, the diagram, uh, it has the scheduler and it has many worker. Uh, you can scale up the the number of worker based on the traffic of the uh, the user request. So recently we we start with eight worker, and the system will automatically uh, scale up to more worker in order to receive more 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 report user request um, easily. So the the task we working with the Redshift and in order to query the data, allocate the data, and uh, transform the data or like modify the data uh, based on the report request. Um, so after that, it will store the, the output. Uh, you see the below one under the dash. Um, it will send uh, store the, the output to the, the Dynamo DB. Uh, the main IO is is the, I mean, uh, the main IO and the Dynamo DB local is uh, the one we use in in, in our de development environment. Uh, but on the at, uh, AWS, we using the Dynamo DB and S3 buckets to store the uh, the uh, the report data there, and uh, finally we will send the the email to the end user. That is how we using the the, the new reporting service, and also the DAS is support the uh, two pider right um, to let our data anal uh, uh, analyst uh, to go there and can work with the DAS in order to make some data allegation, or our developer is using that one for. For, for doing some some call uh, to allocate the data, um, try to review the data before apply it into, into the reporting service. Any question? Uh, then all your all your customers, they are on the same infrastructure or uh, do you classify the customers according to their size and then put them onto different infrastructures when you're doing the deployments? No, we're using the single uh, infrastructure uh, single service, uh, but okay. it's support for multiple uh, customer. Some customer they they just pulling like one or two megabyte re report. Yeah, but some yeah. customer they they pull in like the whole company or like some some big biggest customer. They are the agency. Yeah, they pull in the 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 annual report. They yeah, exactly. That is a yeah yeah that is the, that is the reason I asked because you know like we had a challenge in one of the engagements as well when the larger customers they were pulling a lot of data as a result of which uh -huh. the smaller and the medium customers who were pulling in you know like a few megabytes of report their queries were also getting hampered and uh, and because the larger ones they were just you know like um, using the entire processing power of the system so that is why I was curious you know, like how are you handling those kind of scenarios? Yeah, if you look into this one, the the architecture like. Because we we have everything auto scaling, so when 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 uh, the current executor is busy, so when we have more requests into the Kafka topic, we our system will automatically like scale up more executor to handle those the other requests. Okay. So that's why yeah. like if if the biggest customer like they pull in many report and it's like blocking everything. Um, the all the customers still like pull the, their report because uh, we scale up the infrastructure to more instant in you know, order to handle their their request. Um, yeah, but uh, but but your Redshift and you know like your 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 database infrastructure is that scaling up as well because ultimately that is what is going to become the uh, point of constraint, right? That, yeah, that's 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 the bottom net. But Redshift can handle more the uh, um, more connection, right? Um, mm -hmm. they they have the WLP. Um, is is the query uh, limit uh, for for the user. Uh, but we because we have the, the database uh, proxies. Um, so it will handle the the number of connection. Uh, on uh, working for the workers, and the worker okay. is right now the worker is scale up to like maybe like just like uh, twenty worker only. So I don't think it's, it's, it's the problem here because one worker we make one connection to the database. Yeah, yeah, and 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 most of these queries, you know, like you are sending back an email when so once the processing is done. So in any case, this is asynchronous. Uh, but I'm just curious, is there a is there an SLA uh, that you have to meet uh, that you know like any any request for a report that I send across, I should be getting the response in like 60 minutes or something. I don't know. You know, like are there any yeah. SLAs? Yeah, sixty minutes is uh, the SLA uh, from the unified platform to the customer. Okay. 
okay. yeah, when they pull in. But usually, like, just only like something like the system is behave weird. It will take like 30 minutes. Um, but um, like, um, usually, like, it just happened like around like five or 10 minutes only. Got it. Uh, Got it. You okay. Will, yeah. You receive it. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Um, yeah. So like, like today, I just upgrade the dot um, to put putting more more resource on it because the worker just like we using the eight gigabyte memory for the for each worker only, um, and we we support like it will scale up more 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 worker right. But um, today I just permit permit to like twelve gigabyte because we using the um the Kubernetes so it's easy to to do it. Got it. And I don't know if you uh, if if you would have a number, but you know, like a rough range would be helpful as well. Uh, what is the what is the monthly spend on AWS for running the entire platform? Um, before that, it's over one hundred thousand. But um, the the latest one I I got is like fifty, over fifty thousand per month. Okay, that's not bad. That's not bad. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. We reduce a lot because uh we we apply auto scaling like the data collection right before yeah. that is is have like one hundred instant EC two instant running all the time, and mm -hmm. after that like we we optimize that one like oh just just using the smaller one but uh we will apply the auto scaling to spring up more instant uh right. when we we need only so that's reduce a lot of uh cost on the AWS yeah. for Unify. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty nice. Yeah. And I think this load would also increase when there are special events, uh, because at that time the number of campaigns would go up. I'm assuming. Um, can you say again? Uh, sorry. So there are like a lot of events. For example, I'm I'm not sure how like what events are there in North America, uh, and during that events campaigns would go up, right? I mean, the number of campaigns running would go up. So, do that increase the cost a lot for AWS? Um, no, it's just like when when we have more event, um, more user request to the Kafka, right? So we have the Kafka lag monitoring. So uh, the auto scaling we're working with the Kafka lag, and it will spring up the more instant in order to handle those requests. And then after that, if the the lag is the the lack of the task capture message uh capture topic is reduced so the auto scaling will be um terminate those instant um so the cost will be uh not jumping so high uh when we have a lot of event because uh just at, at, at the same time if you got a lot of events so we we just uh, spring up like more instant in order to handle those uh, requests um uh for like one or two hours only and then yeah so it will like optimize the cost here understood yes. right uh, just one more point related to kafka itself uh, kafka scaling itself uh, so kafka uh, doesn't allow the scaling of uh, okay uh so okay there, there was there there is like one related issue that I, we are facing or we face a lot in our in our one of the project, and that is we used to in, create a Kafka topic for every user, so it has a different different case there. Uh, as the number of users increase on the platform, the number of topics increase, right? And later on, we just remove oh. the topics which were not used. Uh, so we, in this case, yeah. are Kafka topics related to the events? Like, for example, one event is related to one Kafka topic, or do they all go into one Kafka topic? um so they they so we depend on right for for example like the way from the reporting the report api to the kafka we are using the single topic to store as the queue so we we not we're not scaling the the kafka because kafka when you're scaling is is is, is not, um actually it's, it's impossible to scale scale down again because right. would like the number of partition if you exactly agree increase the number of partitions to be higher and you want to reduce the number of partitions if you lost the data or like it will make the um the Kafka is not allow you to do it easily it, right unless unless you have to delete that topic and create a new one right so 
that's why like we we not scale up the Kafka. We provide enough um, um, infrastructure for the Kafka to run it. But we use usually we use in like we we dis, define the topic and the number of partition based on the need of the user request. For example, like the reporting uh, queue, we use in like eight partition only, right? So it means like we can scale up the executor here to maximum of eight. So when when we by default we have two executor running, and then after that, like when the user request more, we will scale up uh, like the Fibonacci, like a four, uh, two four, and eight, right? Um, so it it will it will it will let let the um, the Kafka topic, um, the, the number of consumer will balancing with the, uh, connecting to the that Kafka topic because if you have eight uh, partition, you have two um, two uh, consumer. So each consumer will uh, will connect to four partition, and when you scale up to four, so you you, you can go to three, right? Three is unbalancing. Uh, you have to go to four. Four is mean like consumer will connect to two partition so Understood. from four you you can like go up to eight so that is the the mechanism we apply in our backend for auto scaling we not we don't scale like one or uh, one or uh, one we scale like a double and we select the number of partition is like two four eight sixteen twenty uh thirty two sixty four in order to let let our scaling mechanism is working well Understood. Yep. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. Again, so I, this one monitoring dashboard for a report. You can see like how many fail report, how many uh, specific report. Um, which user is uh, request the report, and and what kind of report um the user doing. Um, and there's a lot of things like you can see like how much data. Um, actually, how much data is how how many raw um raw data we query from Redshift, right? So it will show you there uh, here as well, and the uh, the number of execution time um with the system we spend for for generating the report, and um if it's over thirty minutes, it will come out and will inform to the end user. Uh, but um that is the 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 one we monitoring and we optimize our system here. Um, so if in in the morning I'm I open the last one and I'm seeing oh it's a lot of fail report here last night because some some user they schedule report and we will we will based on this one we we can rejoin the the report by ourselves after we fix in the issue um, and or like we will contact to the customer like oh is there something uh, um happen is inbound to your report um. You might like rerun the dash report again, so everything will show on the dashboard here to let the engineering team can monitor easily. I'm just curious, Tim. Uh, uh, why does why why does the report fail? What are the scenarios? Um. So the the report fail like um like the issue in the call, right? Um. So some of the uh, scenario of the report, the user or like some of data is is. The data case we not over yet. So like, oh, we expect like the data is A, but uh, some of the data is B, right? So okay. expect the report fail. So mm -hmm. we will monitoring everything here, and we understand like what the user trying to get and why we 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 we, we can't deliver the report to the end user, and then we will fix uh, from outside or ask the user to fix from their side. Some of yeah, yeah, yeah. some yeah. Or like the report is time out, like we the service spend a lot of time after 30 minutes, we Correct. can't then read the report because of some reason. We will yeah. we will say a time out. So yeah. um yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, because you cannot uh, just keep it running for a very long time, right? Yeah. yeah. Um yeah. yeah. If if you don't have the timeout mechanism, is it will impact the whole system and exactly. hanging everything. Yeah. So exactly. that's why we we implement the the, the timeout mechanism there in you know, order to like let our system safe 
and then we will resolve the issue later. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Sounds uh, good. Um, that's it. Uh, any other question? Feel free to ask. Um, Yeah, no, I think uh, uh, this was uh, this was excellent. Uh, at least we get a better understanding about Unified and uh, what is the work that we are doing with them. I think this was pretty amazing. Uh, I know that there are there are a lot of questions that come to mind, but uh, yeah, we can we can discuss them on a case to case basis. But this is this is very nice. I really yeah yeah yeah. This is this is totally out of my knowledge wheelhouse, but it was super interesting to see. How that all comes together it looks like a pretty impressive system yeah sounds good uh, thank you tin uh, for your, <laughs> thank uh, you for, tin, your uh, for yeah for putting this together at a, such a short time thank, thank you very you, much tin. i know you're busy with your everyday work and on top of that you did that so thanks for your time yeah. have a great thank weekend. you everyone thank, thank you tin. you have thank a you, lovely day take care bye bye, -bye. Nice. bye. thanks for